During the final week of the 1995 season, the Atlanta Falcons upset the San Francisco 49ers to clinch the final spot in the NFC playoffs, thus sending the Chicago Bears home. Subsequently, Chicago posted five straight losing seasons until 2001, which wound up being one of the wildest years ever for an NFL team. 90 Sports and Soldier presents Craziest NFL Moments, the 2001 Chicago Bears season. And don't forget to kindly subscribe, share, like, and support 90 Sports and Soldier, and thank you very much. The Chicago Bears would kick off the season against the defending Super Bowl champs, the Baltimore Ravens, who had one of the greatest defenses ever. You hear the NFL cliche that it's a copycat league, but in reality, the 2001 Bears defense was kind of constructed very similarly to the Ravens. Baltimore's linebacking core was one of the best ever, and in my humble opinion around this time, I thought the Bears had the second best group of linebackers in the NFL. At middle linebacker Brian Urlacher and Ray Lewis are Hall of Famers, Roosevelt Colvin was similar to Peter Boulware, someone who could really get after the quarterback from the linebacker position, and War Colvin was like Jamie Sharper, someone who could fly around and make tackles. The Ravens had two behemoths in the middle of their defensive line to take on multiple blocks, which resulted in their linebackers to roam around more freely. During the offseason before the 2001 campaign, the Bears signed two behemoths of their own in Ted Washington and Keith Trailer to play the role similarly to the Ravens' defensive tackles. As for the rest of the defense, Brian Robinson and Philip Daniels were the defensive ends, the corners were R.W. McCorders and Walt Harris, and the safety tandem of Mike Brown and Tony Parrish was a very underrated duo at the time. On the offensive side of the ball, Cade McNown was traded to the Miami Dolphins. Shane Matthews and Jim Miller would still be on the roster as these three quarterbacks basically played musical chairs at the QB position the past couple of seasons. Shane Matthews would start this game against the Ravens and James Allen would start in the backfield. Interestingly, this Ravens defense was historically great against the run and the last running back to gain 100 yards against this defense was Allen. As for the game, the Bears lost 17-6. Chicago then get a bye week because of the attacks in 9-11, but next up would be the Minnesota Vikings at home. The Vikings were still talented, but the 2001 season would be a bad one for the Vikings and this would be Dennis Green's last season. Nonetheless, Chicago won this game 17-10 and Jim Miller would start the majority of the games for the rest of the season. Next up would be the Atlanta Falcons after the bye week. James Allen and Anthony Thomas began to split carries this game. Bears then would go on to win this game and then win their next two against Arizona and Cincinnati. One quick note to make here, the game against Cincinnati will be the game where rookie Anthony Thomas will become the workhorse at the running back position for the Bears. Surprisingly, the Bears were 4-1 and, and it's been a long time since Chicago was three games over 500. A good San Francisco 49er team was next on the schedule. San Fran would be coming into Soldier Field as a team that could move the ball on offense and they were really good. Here's where things began to get wild. With under 5 minutes left to play, Chicago is down 31. Next up, the 5 year Miller, and Cleveland have a 21-7 lead with 32 seconds left to play. Shane Matthews threw this touchdown pass to Marty Booker to cut it to a one possession game. Then on one of the bounciest onside kick attempts that somehow ended up 22 yards downfield, the Bears miraculously recovered the ball. This led to Shane Matthews completing this 34-yard Hail Mary to James Allen to tie up the game and thus resulting in another overtime for the Bears. Blemishes down the stretch were two losses to the playoff-bound Green Bay Packers. On the other hand, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were also playoff-bound, but lost to the Bears twice. One last strange game to note, the Bears won an early December home game against the winless Detroit Lions, but in that game, one of the most reliable kickers, Jason Hansen, who really doesn't have a history of choking, mysteriously missed three field goals in that game, including the potential game-time field goal with under a minute to play. And then I have to mention one of the most enjoyable plays ever, during the Bears' regular season finale against Jacksonville, 340-pound lineman Keith Trailer returned this interception for 67 yards. This is one of the most entertaining plays you'll ever see from an NFL lineman. The Bears finished the 2001 campaign with a 13-3 record, good enough for the number two seed behind the greatest show on turf who finished 14-2. Soldier Field was going to be electric, as Chicago hadn't hosted a playoff game since the 1991 season. Unfortunately, the Bears lost to the Eagles in a game where Philadelphia really spread the ball around and moved Donovan McNabb in the pocket. Furthermore, the Bears had four turnovers, Jim Miller got injured after throwing an interception, and the defense had some missed assignments. Nonetheless, for the Bears and their fans, 2001 was an extremely entertaining year. The 2001 Chicago Bears led the NFL in points allowed and had five Pro Bowlers plus a first-team All-Pro in Mike Brown. The 2001 Chicago Bears had one of the craziest seasons ever.
craziest NFL moments of the 2001 Chicago Bears season. 